I want to work through a net present value calculation example with you based on a past exam paper. So the case study for the given year was on Tiger Brands, which is also a substantial company. And here is the question. Tiger Brands made investments in their property plant and equipment in 2016. So you have to look at the financial statements to get the actual capital investment amount. And it's expected to generate cash inflow of 1 million in the first year, increasing by 250,000 every year over five years, after which the investment will have a residual value of zero. The suggested cost of capital is 15%. A couple of things that I want to point out. The question will always state which discount rate to apply. And for our purposes, it'll always be either 10 or 15%. Now, you might wonder which discount rate to apply, but note that it is in the question. The suggested cost of capital is 15%. You're required to calculate the net present value for the investment in property, plant and equipment, calculated to the nearest rand. Before we do our calculation, it's always important to get prepared with a couple of the basics. So I want to move down to the answer and highlight a couple of things. I prefer to do this in a table format just so I can stay on top of things. The question outlined that there were capital inflows for five years. One of the most common mistakes that could be made is that there is a lack of clarity about the capital inflow for any given year and of course if you're not sure about that any discount rate you apply will automatically not be the correct calculation. So the first step is to work on this first column. In the first year, the year after the investment, so in the current year we never apply a discount rate, only in future years. So in the first year of the investment there will be a million rand cash inflow, in the second year that will increase by 250,000, in the third year by another 250,000, and so you can see that I have added these amounts according to what was stipulated in the question to get me to the year 5 cash inflow which tops out at 2 million, after which there are no more cash inflows for this project. The second very important thing that we have to do in terms of preparing to do the calculation in this example is to figure out what the initial investment was that Tiger Brands made. Now, to go back to our question, it was an investment in property, plant and equipment in 2016. So on their financial statements, if we go and look at their investment, and here it's just important to look at the correct year. So we want to look at 2016, the property plant and investment for that year, 4542. But remember, it's in millions. So we always want to look at the top of our financial statements. And there we see rands in millions. So now we have all of the necessary information to start our calculation. I have the initial investment amount. I've noted down the cash inflows for all five years and I have noted down the correct discount rates because we're using 15% for the five years that the project will be going. In order to get full marks, you have to go step by step. So you will note this is taken directly from a memo. If the steps are not, not done and you perform the calculation with a calculator, you will get marks for the calculation performed. If the question asks for an interpretation between two projects and a recommendation of which project to do, you will also get marks for the recommendation if it is made and it is correct. But to get full marks for the calculation, similar to what you may recall from maths, you do need to do each one of the steps. And so you will note that the present value calculation for each year's cash inflow actually attracts half a mark. Let's take a closer look at the year one cash inflow. So in year one we've got around million coming into the project. Isn't that a, a lovely return? And we're going to multiply it by our discount rate of 8696. Now as we do that you'll note you'll note that the answer is 869,600. Let's do the next one. In the next year, our inflow increases by 250,000, and so we make sure to use the 1.250,000 million number, not 12 million, that's not what we want to do. 
and we make sure also to multiply it by the correct discounting rate. Now in this year the correct discounting rate is 0 0.7561 and I'm sure you can see at this point why having a little table helps just to make sure that you're multiplying the correct discount rate by the correct cash inflow number. And that gives us a present value of 945,125. Now, if we follow the same rationale for each of our next figures, 1.5 million will be multiplied by 0 0.6575 and 1.75 million will be multiplied by 0 0.57. We become very systematic about calculating these present value figures. Now, to calculate the total present value cash inflows, we need to take each one of these values for present values from year 1 to 5 and add them together. In this case, if we add our 869,600 all the way to our 994,400, that gives us a net present value for future cash inflows from this project of 4.7 million and some change. Now, what does that number mean? In our case, it is not the final answer to the calculation. Remember, we still have our net present value calculation to go back to. That is that our net present value is equal to the total present value minus the initial investment. So let's plug in the numbers and see what that gives us. Our net present value, that's what we're trying to calculate, is equal to the total present value of the project that's the number that we just calculated by way of adding up all the present value cash flows of our project over the five years, so our 4.7 million, minus the initial investment. So that's why looking up the 4.5 million 42,000 from our financial statement was really important in order to get the correct answer. So if we do our uh, basic maths there, it gives us a net present value for this project of 254,025. Now, in this case, if you were asked to make a recommendation, you could comfortably say that the project doesn't seem like a bad idea because the net present value is still positive. However, if you were going to come up with a net present value that's negative, you would have to seriously consider whether it is a good way of spending your money or a good way of investing money in a given project. If you had two projects to compare and one had a negative net present value while the other had a positive net present value, you would definitely go for the positive net present value. I also just want to point out that you will probably notice that done on a calculator, which I'm not going to explain because there aren't marks for the various steps, there is a slight difference in the answer. However, from a marks point of view, this answer is not tremendous and you will receive marks should you work it out with a calculator. I do think though that the goal is always to maximize the amount of marks that can be earned and so I urge you to go through each of the steps as highlighted here in order to earn the maximum amount of marks.